Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop and Low Planet. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, the President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We're coming to you live from Astana, Kazakhstan, concerning the uh, Green Expo of 2017. Standing right beside me is uh, Vincent Lorsalis. He is the Secretary General of the BIE. And welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to have this occasion to be with you now. Well, you did a fantastic uh, presentation in your speech. But tell us, what is the BIE? The BIE is the International Exhibition Bureau. It's an intergovernmental organization which has uh, 169 member states. We are the fourth largest organization in number of member states in the world and is in charge of approving, establishing the rules, following up, uh, creating you know, the, the relevance, and selecting the calendar of, for World Fairs. Well, this is absolutely fantastic. This whole thing about future energy is really a very powerful topic. Tell us about the meaning of future energy and the expo itself. Well, the meaning of future energy is you know, online, with the former exhibitions. We take always a theme of the exhibition, a priority of the international community. Can be food and nutrition, can be health, and this time is energy. Future energy is sustainable energy. It's to create a new generations of traditional energy on the one uh, hand, but also to improve and to develop the, the renewable energies. And this is the sense of this uh, exhibition, and this is also the initiative of the government of Kazakhstan, an oil producing country, which is a, a very much interested in creating an alternative to the traditional energy sources. Well, throughout the world, we're going to a planet of 9 billion people by 2050, and energy outside of water is really the core of taking care of those people and providing a high quality of life. So why Kazakhstan and future energy? Well, they know that even if they have big reserves of oil and gas and traditional energies, they know that the future is not sustainable if there is no a strong push towards uh, the new energy, renewable energy. And Kazakhstan already long time ago started creating what they call the Green Bridge with other countries of the region to develop the concept of green energy and to start you know, using the solar power, the, geo the geothermal energy and the wind in order to complement and to reduce the dependency on traditional energies. And also this expo is the way of educating the citizens in this topic. It's a way of engaging citizens because as we all know, there is no solution to any problem without the active, active engagement of the citizens. The BIE, as you were uh, saying, is an international organization, covers the globe, and uh, with Kazakhstan taking this leadership as far as the future energy, what does this say for other emerging market economies about them adopting future energy? Well, I think that all the emerging economies, all you know, the, the new uh, developing countries, they, they are very much aware that they need to create some you know, energy safety. They need to start promoting you know, new sources of energy. And I think they will come here, they will show the ideas, they will show the problems, they will make contact with you know, many other countries in different stages of development. And finally, our idea is to create a network and create a big cooperation program and a big exchange of technology, information, and best practices for the future. Now, looking at Kazakhstan, they are really emphasizing emerging market nations to come here and participate. 
I think that's really a different philosophy, a different energy. And so by them doing that, what do you think that not only will the emerging market economies gain, but also the developed economies? Of course. You know, the, you know in the international community, almost two-thirds of the, of the states or the countries are emerging countries. In our organization, we used to be 20 years ago the non organization with an overwhelming majority of developed countries. Today, we are developing countries' organization. Therefore, the solutions, the, you know, the benefits of organizing this type of events have to be addressed to the, the emerging countries. And Kazakhstan is very much aware that they can have you know, a big uh, impact and also leadership with emerging countries. And they have, uh, therefore, they have been very uh, generous in their approach, very open. And I think after this expo, we will have an improvement in the situation towards the, the new energy sources. I think it's exciting, too, that Kazakhstan is looking at this as a great leap forward as far as the nation is concerned. And this is, the, my understanding, the first such major expo in the, the Central uh, Asian republics and uh, of the former CIS nations. What does that mean not only to Kazakhstan, but also to the BIE itself? Exactly. For us, you know, it's the first time we bring the expos to Central Asia. It's, as you have very rightly said, is the first time we move expos to a former USSR Republic. And uh, therefore, is, you know, we are creating a bridge between the Western and the Eastern world. We have done in, in Europe, in America, we have done expos in China, in the major nations uh, of uh, the Far East. Now, you know, we are creating a link, and this link is very fruitful because it's a country which has a strong uh, scientific tradition and Western education, and on the other hand, has a culture and a sensitivity very much linked also to Asia and to, and to Turkey and countries of the Middle East region. Therefore, you know, this, uh, in this expo is for Kazakhstan a way of irradiating a message in the region, and for the BIE is a way of moving expos to new areas and bringing expos to millions of new citizens. I think it's fantastic. And also, too, you mentioned earlier about the Green Bridge, the Green Bridge. Tell us a little bit about this Green Bridge, and you just talked about between the developed and the emerging market world, but the Green Bridge specifically, how do you see that as a catalyst for the future as we go to 2050? Yes, you know, the, the Green Bridge, as, 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 it, as the word implies, is you know, a link between countries. It's, a, it's not just a transition, which is also in the concept, but it's also you know, a way of linking different uh, governments in their efforts to create and to develop a green economy. That was an initiative of President Nazarbayev, uh, and that was developed by the former Minister of in Environment, uh, Mr. Kaparov, and they, they started having meetings, and the Expo is part of this idea. <coughs> is part of this creation of a bridge between, you know, the mm, all the countries of the world. Ones are cre uh, creating technology, others are using this technology. But all together, are we are going to improve, you know, the technology. We are going to improve also the use of the of the new energies. Now, looking at this, the really important part of this I find very interesting is that even within Kazakhstan itself, it's bringing communications and collaboration among all the various ministries. So it's integrating the nation itself as well as just you know reaching out for the world. Tell us about that dynamic and what that may exhibit to the other emerging market nations that are in uh, going through this transition. I think that you know, one of the biggest values of an expo is the coordination amongst not only all the different sectors of the administration, but also the coordination with private sector, with the uh, civil society. And, you know, in a country which has organized an expo is always, in my opinion, improved because 
there is a big effort of integration, of working together all the different sectors of administration, which is not always obvious. I think that uh, after 25 years of working with experts, I have seen, you know, how, uh, how the administration is improved after the Energy Expo. And this is a good example for other countries. You know, the fact of Kazakhstan doing this effort, different ministries involved, is, is followed up with very, with a lot strong interest by other countries. We have received, you know, requests from Turkmenistan, from Azerbaijan, from other countries of the region, because they are thinking also in hosting an expo uh, one day, well, in the near future. And therefore, you know, they, they are, you know, feeling the need for a, a bigger cooperation between, a more intense cooperation. Well, we're just about running out of time, but I have two more questions. One is that uh, Kazakhstan has made a tremendous commitment as a nation to the infrastructure. And they're putting up this huge expo facility, but then it's going to extend way beyond just the expo itself. Tell us about basic infrastructure, developing that, and the importance of then leveraging that in future years. You know, an expo is an event which is not a six or a three months event. An expo is a way of improving a city. It's a way of integrating a country. That means that infrastructure are not just built for a six month event because it doesn't make sense. That will be a waste if we spend big amount of money just to host an event to create a stage for, for an event. The, an expo is a catalyst for the creation of infrastructures which are in the strategic master plan of a city and of a country. And you know, Kazakhstan is creating infrastructure because it's a very big country they, and they needed to improve the railways, the better motorways, better uh, you know, ways of uh, communication. Therefore, you know, in, in Kazakhstan, uh, this effort would, will go far beyond that we are creating a mobile part of the city. We are creating a very dynamic and active part of the city with the financial center, as you have seen the in the presentation this morning. Well, we're just about out of time, but I wanted to ask you about the BIE. What do you see for the future growth and development of your organization being in this very exciting country, Kazakhstan, and moving forward, and we have to be very quick. We have about 15 seconds to do all that. Well, you know, our organization was a developed country's organization today. It's a global organization, and we have global responsibility, and this global responsibility is to serve the development of the of member state, which is development of all the, the human. Well, thank you very much for being with us. This is absolutely exciting, and uh, we really appreciate the time that you've spent with us. We'll make sure that this is distributed around the world, and uh, thank you again for the leadership that you're providing through the BID. How far would you go to protect the planet? I want you to build an ark. Here we go. Okay, that's good. Oh, okay. Ow! Oh, oh, oh. Maybe there's another way. People! The flood is imminent! Is it too much to ask for a little precipitation? Go to fightglobalwarming.com to find out what you and your community can do to reduce global warming pollution. Somewhere around the world, there are men and women of the armed forces risking their lives, helping rebuild communities after natural disasters collecting toys for needy children, tutoring kids in school. These are your sons and daughters who work to keep us safe, secure, and free. Dedicated men and women who put their country first. Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop and the Planet. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. 
We're coming to you live from Astana in Kazakhstan, looking at the Astana 2017 Future Energy Expo and the importance of this as they spread the information about the most advanced technologies and the best practices around the globe. Sitting right beside me is the Commissioner for the Pavilion of France. This is Pascal Laroux. And uh, he is a very important leader as far as the world community for involvement in the Astana 2017 Future Energy Expo. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, for being with us. Thank you very much. Uh, you have a very definite role as a leader, as Commissioner, uh, dealing with France, but also you're an opinion leader for other uh, nations and why they should be involved. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Future Energy Expo and then we'll talk about the purposes for this. Well, this international exhibition has main aim is to allow people coming from everybody worldwide to discuss, to exchange, to talk about which will be the new means of producing energy. How to make sure that energy will be in line with the preservation of the planet. So this is for me as French citizen, this is in line with the COP21, you know, which has been a success and which has given the way, you know, how to preserve uh, our environment because it is our future that we are talking about. So this is what we will discuss, you know, during uh, this, this exhibition, which will take place during summer 2017. Uh, looking at uh, France as a nation, I know that uh, France is really a leader in Europe as far as renewable energies and also the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. How do you see the experiences of France being a good uh, roadmap as far as a country like Kazakhstan who really wants to be a leader as we go towards 2050? Well, there are different ways to answer to your question. First, um, as you may know, you know, France is really committed to find uh, and to develop what we call an, an energy transition toward uh, green growth. And so we have been implementing in France uh, some key decisions. As an example, we have decided you know, to make sure that by 2030, 30% of the energy will come from renewable, renewable energy. We have decided also that by 2030, in comparison with 1990, uh, the emission of um, gas, uh, different gas, will decrease by 40%. So we have quite an experiment. Uh, we, are, we, are, we have launched a concrete uh, program in that. And so we would like also to make sure that this would be developed worldwide, you know, within the international community. We have also big companies, you know, who are focusing on energy issues such as Total, NG, GDF, GDF, EDF, Veolia, and, and many others. And all those companies, plus our political commitments, uh, make sense, you know, to be here in Astana because we will talk about uh, the best practices in terms of energy uh, consumption and production. We will exchange with other key European, Asian, African leaders to see which kind of cooperation, which kind of dialogue we could initiate here based in, in Astana in order to make sure that everybody will move in the right direction. With the, the global reach that France has as a nation, uh, it's interesting that you're including naturally uh, the representatives from the African continent, uh, possibly even Latin America, uh, South Pacific and Southeast Asia. How do you think that the, this cooperation should be between a developed nation like France and the emerging market nations around the globe to really think seriously about being in Kazakhstan and in Astana during this Future Energy Expo? Well, while to be in Kazakhstan, in Astana, because most of the planets will be there, everybody will gather. So we will spend three months all together talking, discussing, developing network, trying to understand how we could develop cooperation and so on. So this is very important. And for the first time, at least from this, in this perspective, you know, uh, in future energy, um, you will have maybe 100 countries which will be present. 
not only Western countries, because we are, we are very used, uh, North American, the US, uh, European countries, to, to be all together. This is a, a whole habit now. But to, to, to be in a position to talk, to make some technology exchange or concrete discussion about partnership with African countries, with South American countries, or with the poor, uh, poorest countries of, of Asia, it makes sense. So it will be a unique place where to do it and to discuss. Now, looking at the commissioners, there's commissioners from all over the globe. So it's not just France, but, you know, China, you know, there's many commissioners. Tell us about the role of the commissioners and how do they impact as far as the expo itself, one in the selection of these areas, but then to help them to adequately prepare to host the world within their country, just as like Astana and Kazakhstan is going to be doing in 2017? Well, the role of a commissioner, you know, is to organize the presence of his own country, you know, locally in Astana. So we have to talk with local companies, I mean, as French, to French companies. We have to think about which kind of scenography we could imagine in order to make um, uh, understandable, uh, very uh, innovative technologies uh, for household, household with f for families we will visit, but also for technicians who will come from Central Asia, Russia, China, uh, Iran, Central and, and Western Europe, and so on. So this is very important. So we are like a, we call in France a chef d'orchestre, you know, the, the man who is uh, with uh, the stick, uh, uh, with, the flag. Uh, with the flag, and, and the man with, within an orchestra, you know, who organize everything. It is this kind of job, you know. But this is also a kind of job which he has to do in terms of diplomatic uh, work uh, with both, indeed, uh, Kazakh people, or the Kazakh government, and other governments who will attend, you know, the, um, the exhibition. Because we have to prepare meetings, we have to uh, select some specific topics of discussion uh, with the idea of developing cooperation. So this is a more or less, I would say, a technical role, but it is also a diplomatic role. Looking at uh, Kazakhstan, I mean, as a, a citizenry and as the president's office and as a country, they've determined they want to be a top 20 country by 2050. And they're very aggressively going about that. And they're investing in their future, taking their uh, petrodollars and uh, natural gas exports and uh, investing that in. Uh, what do you see uh, that Kazakhstan has done that may be uh, unique or different than other countries in the past, which is positioning them not only to advance their own country, but also the countries within the region? Well, Kazakhstan, first of all, is a very peaceful country, you know, which is very open to all kinds of, of regimes, of governments, and so on. So this is a place where people who are not used to talk to each, each to the other, uh, one to the other, can do it here. So, uh, and on a broad basis. So this is very positive. Uh, this is also a country which made a lot of improvement in terms of governance, in terms of economic organization, in terms of modernization of economic, financial, and administrative structure. So this is a country which become very, very modern today. Um, it, it is a country, indeed, which is so-called landlocked because it between, between Western, uh, Western Europe on the, on the west, Russia on the north, China on the east, and sub uh, Indian continent on the south. So maybe it is very far away in an understanding from the main economic routes. But well, it becomes now a place where to be, where to come, uh, to develop business, to, to, to talk with the others, and, and I'm very confident, you know, in the fact that this country will emerge as a leading regional country, definitely. Uh, looking at uh, many other countries now, since uh, Kazakhstan, in a sense, is adding to that pool of countries that can actually host such a huge and important expo, that there's other countries that are saying, we want to try that too. So what kinds of uh, best practices or lessons can Kazakhstan share with the surrounding countries, but also countries in Africa and Latin America and other places that they may be able, what should they be looking for as how they should proceed to be host in the future? Well, it is difficult to answer to such, such a question because according, uh, 
if we talk about be best practices, so we will have big discussion about this issue, you know. But so we have to wait a little bit <laughs> before. But what is very clear today that uh, if we took, if we take, sorry, um, Kazakhstan as it is, it is an oil and gas producer with huge uh, mineral uh, reserves, a lot of coal, a lot of uranium, and so on and so on. Well, it, it is very easy for a country like that. It could have said, well, I have a lot of basic fossil energy res reserves, so I will not do anything. But well, they have decided to invest money, to invest time, invest human um, right or smartness mm -hmm. uh, in thinking about what will be the future of energy, uh, how to transform a, a classical economy into a very modern oriented one, which will base and focus most, most of its, its energy on on developing, you know, renewable uh, practices, uh, uh, new ways of producing energy in a way which is in line with the preservation of the planet and, uh, and of the environment. So, well, no, 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 nothing uh, has obliged Kazakhstan to do it, but so they have decided to think in terms of what will be the future for the next and the next of the next generation. So this is very innovative. And so this is a good lesson, you know, which the country could give to other emerging or so-called emerging countries. Well, we're just about running out of time. And thank you for sharing with us uh, your great expertise and your leadership and your willingness to communicate. Uh, but as we move forward towards uh, 2017, what would you like to tell the world from your perspective as a commissioner uh, for representing the, the French government and the French people? And at the same time is, um, how you personally benefit and how you would like to see this expo progress for the future? Well, f a few key messages uh, to, to all those who will uh, listen to this interview. Well, pay more attention to what's going on outside of, of your nation. Go abroad, visit, talk to foreigners and so on, and come to Astana to have discussion. And especially if you are interested in energy issues, um, I am very confident in the future. You know, because uh, if people start talking one to the other, if people try to develop cooperation, but very um, future-looking cooperation and discussion, so it will be to the benefit of the mankind. So that's a very positive decision. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, thank you for being with us and sharing. And uh, thank you for being with us as we look around the globe to create the Emerald Planet. Art, a universal language, an expression of culture, of self. And now, thanks to Empowered Women International, a way for emerging and established immigrant and refugee artists and artisans to find hope to earn a living while enriching the lives of all of us. Empowered Women International, making a better America every day. For more information on Empowered Women International's educational programs or to make a tax-free donation, contact C. Fripp at AOL.com. Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop, Emerald Planet. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, the President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet, Emerald Planet TV. We're coming to you live from Astana, Kazakhstan talking about the uh, Green Pavilion 2017 in Astana. And right beside me is Wang Jinzing, who is the uh, commissioner for the China Pavilion and the China chief representative for the BIE. And uh, Commissioner, thank you for being on Emerald Planet TV. Thank you for having me.
And uh, it's wonderful to meet you here in Astana, uh, Kazakhstan. Tell us a little bit about the China Pavilion for the 2017 Asana exhibit and expo. And uh, you know, uh, today is the meeting for the international uh, participating uh, country. And uh, we still have uh, almost uh, one year and a half way to go. And uh, we are in, still in the preliminary stage uh, on the China Pavilion. And uh, this morning, we officially signed China's participation agreement. But anyhow, this uh, expo theme is called the Future Energy, uh, which is obviously uh, very important, uh, not only uh, to the hosting country, to China, and uh, to all the countries in the world. Uh, because you see, we are in the new, uh, <coughs> that is a environment, environment that uh, needs to have a, a green uh, 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 technology and uh, green uh, living. So uh, uh, from this sense, I think uh, uh, this uh, expo uh, will be very important. And uh, of course, you see, you know very well, China is the biggest developing country, and also we are the biggest uh, energy producing and uh, consumption uh, countries right now. And uh, of course, you see, uh, uh, just uh, comparing with the United States, and uh, China is a uh, latecomer, and uh, you are pretty much advanced in uh, uh, technologies in green area, and uh, we are studying uh, from uh, uh, advanced country like the United States and also some others, and uh, try to cooperate uh, with those uh, that uh, could be or that are willing to cooperate uh, with us in order to uh, uh, advance our environment. Because you see, uh, advancing our environment is very important, uh, not only to China, but also to the world. Uh, because we have 1.3 uh, billion people and also uh, we confess on the one uh, hand and the uh, technologies that we use are not uh, well advanced uh, but still you see uh, we are working very hard on uh, developing uh, new technologies and uh, especially for the uh, uh, new uh, energy so uh, like uh, solar, like uh, wind and also like uh, some other new uh, uh, energies uh, that we are advancing in, uh, in the last uh, decade or so. And in fact, you see, uh, China has produced uh, a lot of uh, this uh, equipment technology and it has been transported uh, to uh, uh, many countries in the world. So, which is uh, uh, very, very good. And also, you see, uh, that is the uh, environment is the issue that was. Uh, uh, that has been he uh, discussed heatedly uh, by international community. And uh, happily to see and uh, to say uh, that uh, cooperated uh, by our two countries, that are China and the United States, and also with the efforts from uh, other members of the international community, uh, that uh, Paris uh, Climate Conference uh, finally reached a deal, uh, which will be uh, good ultimately for the world uh, for the world. So uh, China will uh, keep its commitment uh, to uh, try to reduce those uh, 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 emission of those uh, uh, sort of a pollution or something like that. So uh, of course it is good uh, mm -hmm. for China, for the Chinese people and uh, even for the world. I think it's absolutely fantastic for the world. As I mentioned to you earlier, we started working with China in 1973. Yes. So that's uh, many years ago. And the uh, speed and the pace as far as uh, having green energy and to uh, actually improving the environment in China is quite impressive. There's been tremendous change that's been going on, uh, you know, over these uh, number of years. And so why would you want to participate in this uh, Future Energy Expo in Kazakhstan? And of course, you see, energy is the most important area that China attaches to. Because you see, we have a big uh, population. We are the populist country in the world. So uh, this uh, reminded uh, me uh, that uh, you know, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, once hosted <coughs> World Expo in 1982. The theme was energy, and uh, I still remember at that time China was the country, uh, New China. I mean, uh, People's Republic of China uh, participated the first time. Uh, the Knoxville, uh, Tennessee Expo. 
and uh, we didn't have much uh, things to exhibit. And uh, uh, what we exhibited was the least uh, developed or just uh, traditional things. But now you see uh, things uh, uh, has been uh, greatly changed in the last uh, three decades or so. So, uh, of course, you see for Kazakhstan, as I sa said just now, the theme is the future energy, which is very important. And uh, Kazakh Kazakhstan is a neighboring uh, country of China, and uh, we've already established a strategic uh, partnership uh, relationship. And uh, there has been a lot of exchange of uh, visits, uh, exchange of uh, goods, and also exchange of uh, technologies. So. Uh, uh, it means uh, people from both countries are willing to uh, just uh, work uh, more closely uh, to develop uh, for the common good for our uh, two people. So uh, since uh, this expo is the, uh, is the platform for the world, so we uh, come here not only to exhibit uh, what we uh, have achieved or what we have, or what have we have achieved and uh, what we are going to develop in the future, and uh, we would look, like to share uh, our uh, achievements or development uh, with the hosting country and also with the other participating countries uh, in order to uh, uh, just uh, further uh, develop uh, uh, that is, uh, this technology and uh, in order to make uh, our work uh, even better. So uh, I think uh, this is the purpose for us to uh, participate in the Expo. Looking at Kazakhstan, it's a, a petro uh, country that has uh, vast oil reserves and natural gas. At the same time, uh, as far as the Central Asian republics, it's the first time to have an expo yeah. in this. China, of course, has had numerous expos over the years. But what is your uh, feeling, your thought about what Kazakhstan is doing as far as being an example for the emerging market nations in Africa, Latin America, Southeast Asia, even across the South Pacific, uh, and how you think their influence will be a big help to these nations to say, we can do it too. Yeah, uh, up to now, you see, I think uh, Kazakhstan has done a very good job, and uh, everything is done according to the schedule right now. And uh, what you said is right, is uh, uh, Expo 2017 is the first one first export that I have been ever held uh, in uh, Central uh, Asia uh, area, so which is very important. So I think uh, important uh, for the export course or export business, because export has been uh, uh, in existence for over almost 160 years. Mm. And it has been held in uh, uh, North America, of course, U.S. is the country that has organized most of the expo, I should say, ranks maybe the first, then uh, has been organized in uh, Europe, in Asia, uh, then uh, of course it's never have been held in Central Asia and uh, never have been uh, held in uh, uh, Africa and uh, even uh, South uh, America right now. So, but anyhow, you see, uh, really, you see, expo is a unique uh, uh, platform uh, for the people to come together to exchange uh, of idea thinking and also to uh, establish or to uh, establish a friendship and also to discuss idea on how to further improve uh, the technology's living st standard uh, of the people. So I think uh, it's a very good, it's a great thing. So now you see uh, uh, Central Asia is the area that is going to be uh, developed uh, in the uh, uh, right now and also in the future because you see it is uh, strategically uh, located uh, between uh, Europe and uh, North, uh, uh, North Asia or Northeast Asia. So I think you see uh, by having uh, this uh, expo then uh, Kazakhstan will be uh, more exposed to the international uh, society mm -hmm. and uh, of course it will be help them to further develop. Uh, looking at the uh, expo itself, you said it's been around over 160 years, yeah. which is a very long history, yeah. and uh, and it's it's very impressive the work that they're doing to allow the world to come together, yeah. not only to see but also to collaborate, to yeah. exchange ideas and uh, technologies. 
What do you see for the future growth of such expos as we move towards 2050? Yeah, I think uh, <coughs> expo business is uh, thriving, I should say, and uh, it is uh, developing. And uh, especially, you see, uh, uh, I think you see uh, the people uh, uh, have a better understanding on the importance of the expo right now, and uh, especially, you see, uh, for China. And I should say, you see, uh, we hosted uh, Expo 2010 in Shanghai, mm -hmm. uh, which was participated by 196 countries and uh, also uh, 56 or uh, 58 cities mm -hmm. from uh, different parts of the world. And uh, visitors uh, amounted to almost uh, 73 million people, mm -hmm. uh, which was the most uh, within the history of the Expo. So uh, now you see, uh, uh, after Shanghai World Expo, and uh, we had uh, one in 2019, uh, 2012 in uh, Yosu, Korea, mm -hmm. and also we had it in uh, Milan 2015 last year, and uh, both were very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, successful in terms of the exhibiting, in attracting the uh, visitors, in organizing the events, and also in uh, conducting those uh, exchanges. So uh, especially, I think, you see, also to help the growth or develop of the hosting area or the city or something like that. So uh, now, you see, I'm pretty sure that the Astana one will be a success, uh, not only for the theme, but for the uh, experience that they have gained from the previous uh, experience, uh, uh, expo and also with the uh, efforts or coordination or cooperation uh, from uh, other countries. So uh, I think uh, it will be successful. And uh, looking forward, uh, I'm sure you see there will be uh, more and more countries not only participating in it and also in bidding to host uh, the World Expo. So now you see we are preparing for 2017 and also uh, uh, next one is coming for 2020 in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, according to my understanding, that uh, several countries are the, uh, or have already become the candidate uh, cities or countries uh, to uh, bid for 2025 and also some uh, others uh, down in the road for the 2030. That's so fantastic. I'm pretty sure a lot. Yeah. Thank you very sure, much thank for you. Uh, being with us and thank you for being with us as we look around the globe to create the Emerald Planet. Saving for retirement might be easy for some folks, but for others, it might take a little more work. And for those who haven't started, there are still things you can do to catch up, like getting out from underneath past debt. And don't get wrapped up with high-interest credit cards. Let's get you some eyes. Be diversified with your investments. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Your financial goals are not out of reach. The choice is clear. For a happy ending, choose to save. Everyone with alcohol and drug addiction is in the same boat. With treatment, you can find solid ground. For drug and alcohol information and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Dude, are you sure you want this tattoo? Because, just do it! Some mistakes in life are permanent. Like hearing loss. To learn how to protect your hearing, visit ASHA.org. Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop, Emerald Planet. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of Emerald Planet, Emerald Planet TV. We are coming to you from Astana and Kazakhstan, looking at the Expo 2017 Future Energy. 
and I have someone who actually on behalf of our own country is working to in this uh, very valuable field and uh, aiding to the development of our own country of Malaysia. This is Tak Lu Tuk Gi, who is the Secretary General for the Ministry of Energy, Green Technology, and Water. And uh, as I was teasing you, next week they'll add something else to that. But anyway, thank you for being with us on the Emerald Planet, and thank you for being in Kazakhstan. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Samuel, for the kind introduction. Well, I've been to your country five different times, and it's a beautiful country, very vibrant people, and you're doing absolutely good things on behalf not only of Malaysia, but of the world. Tell us a little bit about where in Malaysia is located and uh, some of the dynamic of the country. We are um, located in the tropics. Um, it is uh, located south of Taiwan and north of Singapore for the easy reference or, or understanding of where Malaysia is located. Um, that is Peninsular Malaysia and we have another part of Malaysia which is uh, um, located in on the island of Borneo and we call it East Malaysia which consists of the states of Sabah and Sarawak. So in total this, this Peninsular Malaysia and the two states make up the country called Malaysia. Now, really, you're on the cutting edge as far as development for Malaysia because you're doing energy, green technology, and water, all critical to development. Why did the government put all of these within the same ministry? Um, in fact, we started off um, as a ministry which is responsible for the um, administration of utilities um, in the old days, we were in charge of energy and um, telecommunications, but with the green technology becoming an important component of Malaysian government's um, strategy, the um, Prime Minister in the year 2009 restructured the ministry to incorporate energy, green technology, and water. So basically, we are in charge of um, the utilities, um, energy, which is uh, the uh, uh, backbone of economic development as well as water and also green technology, which uh, covers quite a broad spectrum of the economy. Well, looking at what is going to be happening 2017 in Astana and Kazakhstan, it's called future energy. But really, I think the idea that you have and what's going on in Malaysia as far as putting the uh, energy green technology and water together is a very sound policy because those are all critical for development. But why do you want to participate uh, at the Expo in 2017 as the country of Malaysia? Um, the topic chosen by the um, Kazakhstan government, um, future energy, um, is certainly a very timely topic which uh, covers um, the areas of concerns that the global community is um, 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 working towards in terms of cutting down carbon emissions, uh, making use of the energy resources in a very efficient manner, and also to ensure basic energy access to all. These three areas that um, is covered under the main theme of the Future Energy um, Expo um, or the Astana 2017 Expo um, covers areas that uh, are basic to all countries and that's why Malaysia is very keen to support the Kazakhstan government in the um, Expo 2017. Now, looking at uh, the government of Malaysia, it's uh, usually a very long process as far as being involved in the expos. What types of things uh, does a country such as Malaysia consider when it's going to participate in something like an international expo? Well, uh, we look at the theme. I the theme must be relevant. It must be timely, so uh, we have um, 
look through the theme and we find that this is certainly in line with what we in Malaysia are looking for. So in terms of future energy, the area that we are looking at um, in terms of carbon emission reduction would be to deploy tools or strategies such as renewable energy and we notice the Kazakh government also is moving very aggressively in this area. For Malaysia too, we are also um, moving in the area of green energy or clean energy, such as um, solar energy, um, biomass, wind energy, all these are clean energy and it will help to reduce carbon emissions as well as to help the world um, contain the temperature increase to not more than uh, uh, 2% as agreed upon at the COP21. Now looking at uh, your participation here in Kazakhstan, in Astana, what are some of the things as a government and also as a people you would like to be able to take back to Malaysia and what kind of benefits would you like to achieve during your time and participation here in Astana? So our participation can be viewed from two perspectives, from a uh, government-to-government perspective, as well as people-to-people -people, uh, perspective. In terms of G2G relations, uh, we have very close and good relationship with the government of Kazakhstan. And we'd like to um, exchange information and also share knowledge on the type of um, industries or the um, areas that they would like uh, to have closer collaboration with us and we hope with this we can scale up the level of trade between Kazakhstan and Malaysia. Mm. And in terms of people to people relationship, um, we uh, like to bring more Malaysians uh, to visit this lovely country of Kazakhstan and there are many uh, Malaysians uh, who are embarking on uh, uh, trips to um, both Astana and Almaty, so this one area that uh, we can also scale up um, trade between the two countries. That's fantastic. Now, looking at the other side of that, of course, uh, there's things that you want to be able to, uh, the Kazakhs, to actually share with you and allow you to uh, take back to Malaysia. So when you're looking at it, what do you think that the Kazakhs can contribute to Malaysia itself? And uh, how do you think this will expand as we go towards 2025, 2030, 2050? The type of trade that uh, is being um, um, undertaken by Malaysia, um, actually it involves uh, more export of machinery, et cetera, to, to Kazakh, Kazakhstan. But we know Kazakhstan is a country that's uh, well blessed with many types of resources, um, particularly coal, um, oil, and gas, etc. But uh, you know, for power generation in Malaysia, we are now embarking on the construction of more power plants that would be using coal. Um, we adopt the latest technology, which would help us to address the carbon emissions. But um, in terms of the feedstock, uh, we tend to import a lot of coal from abroad and uh, probably Kazakhstan is one potential market where we can look at for the um, coal uh, sources. Your country, Malaysia, is definitely a uh, middle, upper middle income uh, nation, uh, well-developed infrastructure, and Kazakhstan is committed and is moving in that direction at the same time. Malaysia also, like Kazakhstan, is a regional influencer in Southeast Asia. Kazakhstan for uh, Central Asia and Asia Minor. So how do you think there's parallels between uh, your two countries and how you can mutually support each other to continue to expand your influence in your own special regions? Um, the, I understand the CIS region um, comprises of about 150 million uh, uh, people compared to ASEAN, 600 million people. There's a lot of potential in terms of um, trade as well as uh, uh, fostering closer relationship between the people probably through educational exchange 
and uh, in terms of trade, there's a big potential for trade relations between the two regions. Mm. And, and Malaysia can certainly play a very important role to um, spearhead this um, closer relationship. I know that Malaysia has some uh, very excellent uh, institutions of higher learning, universities. Uh, Kazakhstan has some excellent universities at the same time. Uh, do you see potential for exchanges between your universities as students, as faculty and administrators, and how do you think this may help to strengthen the, the higher education for both countries? In fact, um, we have the university patronas which uh, can offer good um, training um, facilities for Kazakh students who, who are in interested you know, in the area of um, petroleum engineering. And uh, also in Uni 10, we also offer good um, facilities for students who may want to study with the area of um, power engineering. So if University of Kazakhstan, maybe we can enter into a closer um, collaboration in the areas that uh, we are interested in. So th there'll be plenty of potential for people-to-people -people, uh, relationship. So it sounds like uh, this is going to be a very positive experience, uh, both for Malaysia and Kazakhstan. Uh, we're just about running out of time, so uh, one or two last questions. Uh, what do you see as far as the uh, future development, and this is going to focus on Malaysia itself, what do you see for the future development and expansion of Malaysia, say over the next 5, 10, 15 years as we go towards 2050? either in green energy or anything that you think is uh, critical and important to Malaysia itself? In fact, the government is uh, working very hard to transform the country, be it from the perspective of government administration, the economic transformation and social transformation. So there are many programs um, being introduced to change the mindset of Malaysians uh, to embrace more technology and innovation in thinking and uh, to adopt a more open-minded uh, approach. Uh, we shouldn't be working in terms of silos. That's the instruction given to most all the ministries. We have to work together, um, adopt the Blue Ocean Strategy to improve the government administration. And in terms of economic perspective too, we are working very hard to scale up um, trade and investment as well as to explore potential areas of collaboration with countries around the world and in particular with Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, Malaysia in 15 years time will be very different. It will become hopefully the upper uh, middle income group or become, in fact, we want to become an advanced economy by the year 2020. I know you and uh, Kazakhstan are uh, both uh, very active in that. Thank you for sharing with us, and thank you for being with us as we look around the globe to create the Emerald Planet.